The Dell XPS 17 from 2020 is an exciting computer for a lot of reasons. And today we're gonna make it like more exciting by putting a whole bunch of cool new stuff in it. So how easy is it to upgrade the Dell XPS 17 and can you do the same? Let's find out. I don't wanna break it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I love these XPS machines. One of the reasons that I love them is because of how easy they are to upgrade. And if you know me, I've spent a lot of my time using Apple computers. And one of the unfortunate parts about Apple computers is everything is soldered down and you can't upgrade anything, which kind of sucks. So today we are gonna upgrade this XPS 17 that we just unboxed yesterday. So really quickly, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna benchmark this. So this is the version with the GTX 1650 Ti and eight gigabytes of RAM. So we'll do a quick benchmark with Cinebench and we'll do a really quick render with Premiere Pro just to benchmark it. Then we'll upgrade and then we'll see was it worth it to put this extra stuff in here. I've got a Samsung 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 drive that we're gonna put in and I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM from Crucial. Now it will like objectively give me another terabyte of storage and 64 gigabytes of RAM, but let's just find out first if this is gonna be a cool science project to see how easy it is but it's also gotta be like worth it, right? If I'm gonna say, hey guys, go out there and buy this stuff and install it, it's gotta be like worth that effort. So let's plug it in real quick. So we will run Cinebench really quickly and write down our score because I have a terrible short-term memory and never remember anything. Now Cinebench doesn't have much to do with RAM, but I do think a bottleneck has been occurring on this thing. You can see I've already run it once, um, but I think I've got a bottleneck because of how little bit of RAM is in here. So let's see, let's run it really quickly and see what we get. So, okay, so I'm not gonna make you sit through this whole thing. As I sit here, we'll just, we'll fast forward through the magic of video editing. Okay, so we got a score of 3120, which the last score we got of 2704 was with the computer unplugged in. So plugged in, we get a score of 3120. So let's close this. Let's go over to Premiere Pro and we will do a quick export. We've got a two minute and 50 second clip that's 4K. We're gonna export it, see how long it takes. And then after we upgrade it, we'll try it out. Cause I, you know, I'm not really a big fan of like benchmarks cause benchmarks don't really do much for me. What I care about is actual functional use. And that's what Premiere Pro is gonna be for me. Cause I do most of my stuff. I'm a video editor and that's why I use these computers for this stuff. So let's export. We will use the YouTube setting. And let's get the timer going. So export, start. Now I do have the i7-10785 in this thing. So it is a pretty powerful six core processor. But again, I think we're gonna run into a bottleneck of RAM where just eight gigabytes of RAM is not like, there's not enough active memory to let the CPU and the GPU really run wild. And that's what I think we're gonna see some shocking differences after we upgrade here in just a couple of seconds. When it says 100%, we'll count it as complete. That took two minutes and six seconds for the two minute and 50 second clip. So we'll remember that. So let's shut everything down and actually go about upgrading this. I'm so excited. That's my favorite thing. I love it. I love that you can upgrade these computers. I love it so much, obviously, or I wouldn't keep talking about it, right? Oh, great, flip it over. And hey, thanks everybody for pointing out. It's kind of hard to see like in this kind of lighting, but there is a dent, man, it's hard to see now. There's a dent right here. So that's why you always wanna buy your computers from a company that has a reputable return policy where if there is an issue, you can return it if it's like not to your liking. Like this doesn't bother me that much because I drop stuff all the time. But so if this does not meet your level, yeah, buy it from a company that will let you return it. Okay, so step number one in upgrading is I'm gonna take all these screws off. And thankfully we cracked it open for the unboxing. So this should be way easier the second time. I always find it's the second time you open a case is the best. The first time's always a pain, always a pain, especially because they make these, ooh, my hand's cramping. Especially because they make these XPSs like as small as possible. I love this as like a science experiment. Like I, I'm not a very big, I've never built a computer. I've only ever like, when I was using PCs like five years ago, I only ever slowly upgraded them myself. Like I put in new RAM or put in new like graphics cards or stuff like that, but I just love being able to work on these things because it's just fun. Like this is a fun experience for me. Boom, there is the internals of the XPS 17. Wow, I just love it. I love looking at the inside of this computer. It's so good. Okay, so let's make sure we've got this. Where's the battery? Let's unplug the battery so we don't like accidentally fry anything. Battery is unplugged. So let's go ahead. We will start off with the RAM because the RAM is the easiest. 
Now this is different than the XPS 15. It's got these little flaps on it, but it should still just be as easy as, he says, super easy. There's the first chip, the four gigabyte Hynix, Hynix RAM. We'll take this other one out. And it is another four gigabyte chip. This is a little bit faster RAM. This is 3200 RAM, whereas this is 2660, but it is 64 gigabytes as opposed to eight. So I'm hoping those extra gigabytes will give us a little more power. Okay, so it's just that, I mean, check this out. Look at how easy this is. Boom, done, one. Just like, man, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love doing this. Maybe we need to start building computers. If you'd like to see an Apple user fumble through and build like their first PC, leave a comment below um, because I'm, I'm seriously considering it. I am seriously, seriously considering it. There we go. So we've got the two chips of RAM in. Mm, 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 I love it. Okay, so next we will do the solid state drive. So you do get two M.2 NVMe slots here in the computer. This is the one that we are not gonna touch today. You could put this up in a RAID configuration, um, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna leave this solid state drive alone because it's got the operating system and all the current files on there. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in a new drive over here. And much, this is so much better than the XPS 15 because if you remember from the XPS 15 uh, upgrade video, it did not come with like anything. Like it was just an open drive. So I had to buy a screw to hold it down and all that stuff. And I had to buy a thermal pad, not a heat sink. Uh, I had to buy that to set it all down, and that was just a pain in the butt. So I like that this actually comes with. Can we get that out of there? Come on. Come on. There we go. So I like that this already has, like, it's got a thermal pad on there. It's already got the cover built in. It says what it is, PCIe, SSD2. I like that. That is a good setup. So let's get the solid state drive out of here. And it even says on the motherboard, SSD2. Thank you, Dell, because I couldn't tell from the other th several ways that you tried to tell me. And then check this thing out. I know there's already like a new generation of solid state drives coming out, but I just love, this is a terabyte of incredibly fast storage. Like I, the future is now guys, like the future is now. So we will quickly plug this in. There we go. Set this down right like that. And that's how, look how fast, that was even faster than the RAM. And if I remember correctly, the RAM was the fast part of the XPS 15. Man, that's so easy. I wish all computers, like, and when I say all computers, I, I mean Apple. I wish all of my computers were just so darn easy to upgrade. This took five minutes to totally change everything about the computer. Ooh, we should probably plug the battery back in. That's probably, that's probably useful. We probably want battery power. Okay, the battery's now plugged in. Let's screw. We'll do a couple screws just to start it off, just to make sure uh, in case there's something else that I have to mess around with or something that I installed incorrectly, which as a non-expert in upgrading computers, there is a very real chance that I did something wrong. I'm not infallible. I'm the everyday dad, not the everyday infallible guy. We will not be, I will not let my hubris ruin us today. He says as he hopefully didn't fry his computer and is now having, there we go, and is now having problems screwing everything back in. If you can't have fun like doing this stuff, I don't know, like this is, this is the coolest, this is the most fun. Like I would just make videos all about upgrading laptops if I could. This is so much, this is so much fun. Okay. Now let's hopefully the moment of truth, let's find out, does it still turn on? Does the computer still turn on? Did the everyday dad brick his computer just trying to do like the simplest thing you can do? Let's find out. And power. Hey, it turned on. Step one done. We were actually able to connect everything. So we should get the memory configuration assistant here in just a second. And then we will be able to get going because it should detect that we don't have eight gigabytes of RAM anymore. It should detect all of the RAM. What do you do with this stuff? Like with eight gigabytes of RAM left over, what should I should build? I should start building like RAM houses. There we go. Yep, see, I told you. It's almost like I've done this before. Continue. Can we build like RAM houses? There we go. I only have two though. <laughs> Thank you, computer. So let's check real quick and make sure that we have system information. Now we have 64 gigabytes of installed physical memory. You gotta have physical memory. Okay, so now that we're in here, we see the disk zero. 
So we see disk one, so it sees it. Disk one is the one with the operating system on it, 476 gigabytes online. But we also see disk zero, which is the 970. So what we're gonna do, we are going to format this. So it is drive D. Let's make sure we can see drive D. New volume drive D. So what we're gonna do before we start benchmarking, so we've got everything, we've got the one terabyte solid state drive. We've got the 64 gigabytes of RAM. Let's run Cinebench and see if we get a different score now that we've got all this cosmic power. Our last score was in the 3000s and so you don't have to wait for this to render again. The fans really decided to kick in more this time. Can you hear that? That's fine. This should have way better cooling capabilities than the XPS 15, um, but you can definitely, you can hear that. It's a humming, which is good. I'd rather the fans be on than at thermal throttle. We don't, thermal throttling's bad. No big difference when it comes to Cinebench. We didn't really expect there to be, because again, Cinebench is more of a CPU and GPU tool, not really anything to do with the RAM, but I figured there might have been like a bottleneck in there, but clearly there was not. Okay, so let's start a new project. Upgrade test two, because we're on the second test now. Okay, we will import the media from the new drive, drive D, so come down here, new volume D, import this, move it over here. Okay, so we're gonna do the exact same setup. It's still the same. Two minute and 50 second clip. One thing I will say, initially runs much better. Runs much better. The, the storage is, oh, storage is so important. So export media. Let's bring the clock back up. So our last time was two minutes and six seconds. We'll do the exact same H.264. We will do the YouTube 2160 and it'll be all, everything will be the same. It will reset and we will export, start. Okay, we, oh my goodness, look at that thing fly. Holy cow, look at that, we're already down to like 40 seconds. I'm t I told you there was definitely a bottleneck in the RAM when it came to like real work. And geez, this thing is now flying. I mean, I knew it was gonna be faster. I didn't realize it was gonna be this much faster. I mean, that's a, that's a shocking difference. Look at this. Okay, we gotta wait, we gotta be ready. We gotta be ready to stop at 100%. 16, 7, 98, 99. And when it's at 100, 50 seconds. So, wow. We went from two minutes and six seconds to 50 seconds to render a 4K file out of Premiere Pro. So that's, okay, there is definitely an upgrade. You saw how fast that was. That's insane. Definitely eight gigabytes of RAM is not enough if you're trying to push an i7 six core processor in a laptop. So this is how easy it was to upgrade the Dell XPS 17 9700. And look, if I, seriously, if I can figure it out, you could have easily figured out how to do this. If you like this video and you kind of want to see like my initial impressions and what comes in the box when you buy the XPS 17, click here to see my unboxing video. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching. Man, I cannot believe how fast, that was fast.